There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a massive, I, don't, I think it's going to be somewhat massive, on-haul video. I haven't done these very often, but my life has changed, or at least you guys know how much my life is, is changing, in that I'm moving back to Canada at the end of May. I'm filming this on March 2nd or 3rd or something like that, and I have to call my library. I live in Tokyo, if you didn't know that. And I'm going to try to reduce my library by about 40 to 50, if not more, percent and move the rest. And so here is the first call. And it's just from a very small number of shelves. I've just pulled them off. I've already um, started offering them to friends and I'm about to put some in the mail. But I'm just going to, you know, some of these might just go into the trash or just... There are used bookstores that'll give me pennies a book and just to get rid of them, get them out of my sight. My commentary is gonna be hopefully very brief. And in fact, this video and the sh show notes that will list the books will be my record of what I got rid of. The first one is uh, Michal Sebastian's For 2000 Years. I read this a, a year and a bit ago, translated from the Romanian by Philips Osilig, I believe is the pronunciation. And I didn't really like it very much. I thought at the time that I might reread it, and I still feel that way. But uh, if it's a book like this, this is a Penguin modern classic that I could easily get again. And it's a book that I didn't love. It's going. Uh, here's one I never did get to. Elif Shafak's uh, novel, Three Daughters of Eve. I heard this was awful. She sounds like a romance novelist. It's gone. Um, a lot of people hate Sheila Hetty, and, you know, I've heard of three people in my life that actually love her work. Uh, I'm going to go with the majority. A novel that has this ridiculous of a title should probably be burned. How should a person be? A supposedly fun thing I'll never do again. Uh, David Foster Wallace was a violent sexual assailant, so... Uh, he was a supposedly good writer I will never read again. Uh, Damien Barr, You Will Be Safe Here. Mm. I can get this again someday, but never did read it. This is one of the very few books that I brought when I moved to Japan 12, 13 years ago. Haruki Murakami and the Music of Words by Jay Rubin. It's a work of literary criticism. Well, Jay Rubin is his translator, so I don't know what it's about. It's about translating Murakami. I'm still very interested in Murakami, but I can get this book any old time. This is the only book by Oliver Sacks I've ever read, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a hat, His Hat. And I enjoyed reading it. I thought the writing was beautiful. Apparently, um, youngins tell me that his psychiatric or whatever it is, neurological approach is a crime against humanity now. So I don't, I don't have an opinion on that, but I didn't need to keep this. This is a Colombian. It's uh, three novellas, I believe. Mar Margarita Garcia Robea. Fish Soup, translated by Charlotte Kuhn, and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it, and I don't need to keep it. Here is a Chinese novel that I never did read. The Lost and Forgotten Languages of Shanghai, and I don't know how to pronounce that author's name. Ruyan Zhu, maybe? This is a signed copy of a book that is set in the Mississippi Delta in 1946. And it's um, by a white author, so I don't need to keep it. It's called Mudbound by Hilary Jordan. Roald Dahl is a uh, anti-Semite, so why would I read his fiction? And Justin Trudeau, uh, I can't believe I'm getting rid of this. I mean, he's so gorgeous. And, you know, I support him on things like Ukraine and against the, the fascist convoy protesters, but he's been... Um, really disappointing in other areas, especially with indigenous rights. He's overpromised, and oh my god, is he underdelivered? So I don't need to read anything about his life. And I won't say who I'm shipping these to, but here's a, these other ones are going out by mail tomorrow. A gay Australian novel about drug addiction. Who cares? Down the Hume by Peter Polites. Winter in Sokcho, a Korean novel by Elisa Shua Dusapin, translated from, was written in French actually, and translated by Anissa Abbas Higgins. I read it and was very deeply underwhelmed, and I have a Zoom video with somebody 
about it. I'll put a link in the show notes. Don't need to keep this. Uh, Matt Sporter's Lanny. The more I hear about this, especially Adam's review was very convincing. <laughs> no, don't, never going to read this. Uh, a Danish novel, Silence in October by Jens Christian Grondal. Never read it. Would be interested to try it. Will I ever get to it? Translated by Anne Bourne. Uh, not anytime soon, so it's going. And this was the only thing I've read so far from the British Women's Library, the new British Library Women Writers series. And it was so disappointing, I'm kind of nervous. I'm not sure I'll ever try another one. It was really mediocre. So those are going to a friend tomorrow in the mail. This is a French memoir of a gay guy from France. Didier Erebon's Returning to Re Rhymes, Reims, translated by Michael Lucy. He's a Parisian intellectual gay and politically progressive from a conservative working class provincial family. It sounds a bit like Edouard Louis stuff, but I've had it for a few years, never gotten to it, so not going to keep it. Justine Garter wrote Sophie's World, and I got this other novel by him or her, The Solitaire. Mystery. So we got mystery, we got solitary, er, and I believe the it's philosophical fiction, so <laughs> three strikes and you're out. This made the Women's Prize. It's a Ukrainian novel, A Boy in Winter by Rachel Seyfert. Not sure if the author is Ukrainian, but it's set in Ukraine, World War II. I love the cover. I heard very mixed reviews over the years. Never got to it. It's gone. Japanese Zen and the Art of Archery by Yugen Harid Harigal. Charlotte's Web, Sci-Fi, Stanislaw Lem, Tales of Pricks, the Pilot, The Sense of Style by Steven Pinker. Uh, I have since realized what an asshole he is, so I don't want to read what he has to say about writing. Uh, I could just say the same thing about this one. Lucky Jim by Kingsley Amos. What a prick. This has had a lot of good reviews, and every good review I've heard of it makes me think, oh, I don't want to read this. Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl by Andrea Lawler. Brand new, never been, never been read. This was useful to me when I was teaching business English courses here in Tokyo. Different games, different rules. Why Americans and Japanese Misunderstand Each Other by Mark Yamada. And I did find it very useful because, boy, business meetings in Japan couldn't be any more different than they are in America. In Japan, it's not that it's... Um, anti-democratic, but the boss in the company, he goes around and talks to every member of his team or his staff, one-to-one, -one, makes the decision based on, if he's a good boss, based on the input he's received from all of his staff, and then calls a meeting to announce his decision. Well, we're, so there's no discussion at the meeting. It's all happened one-on-one -on -one beforehand, and it's those kinds of cultural differences that that were talked about in here. In the Realm of the Dying Emperor, Japan at Century's End by Norma Field. Never did read it. Oh my god, here's another Japan one. Japan's cultural code words. And I did find some of these explanations of Japanese expressions or words or phrases to be interesting by Boy Boye Lafayette Mente. He's also written some nearly pornographic books about Japanese women or something. I can't remember. There was something that really turned me off of him, so, I, and I, uh, who cares, I don't care about any of this anymore, I'm leaving Japan! Helen Oyayemi, I kept this even though I got rid of all of her other shitty books without reading them, because I love the physicality of this book, but no, she's not a writer worth keeping in my library. Wicked Women by Faye Weldon, I read one of these stories to Lindy during our reading project, and, you know, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it well enough to keep this book. And here is a novel from a Lebanese writer, Samarkand, by Amin Malouf, translated by Russell Harris. And I read the first 40 pages of this and set it aside a few years ago, and it's going out of the house. So that is batch number one of my book on haul. Mm -hmm.